Ja. And your f Hello, Tony. I'm sorry I can't be with you tonight, but I feel that I am in spirit. Now, we first met back in 1961, when I went backstage to see you after your performance in Stop the World, I Want to Get Off. You stopped the show in London with What Kind of Fool Am I? And then you did it again in 1962 in New York. A year later, we were married and had our two wonderful children, Tara and Sasha, who I know are with you tonight. I want to send all three of you my fondest love and to wish you every success with Scrooge. I saw it last week and as usual, you were great. Have a wonderful night and all my love for a smash hit. Thank you, Joan Collins. Well, Anthony Newley, this is your life. Your talent first burst onto the screen in 1948 as the artful dodger in Oliver Twist. Since then, you've become an international entertainer. You've captivated audiences in the West End, on Broadway, and in the cabaret capital of the world, Las Vegas. What kind of fool am I Who never fell in love it seems that I'm the only one that I have been thinking of. What kind of man is this? An empty shell, a lonely cell in which an empty heart must dwell. Will I be without your goodness helping to carry me through? Nobody cares but we do Tell me frankly Where would you be? I'd be up a tree uh -huh. What would you do? I'd throw things at you, you. Where would you be? <laughs> Without a me The trouble is I can't clap holding this book, it's very difficult. <laughs> anyway, socking it to him there with your great buddy Sammy Davis Jr. on a Burt Bacharach TV special. And Burt sends this greeting to Birmingham from over there. Newly, how many times did I conduct that for you at the end of the show when we worked together? Anthony Newly, Newly Burt Bacharach together. I miss you, Tony. I miss the times that we had together when we did perform together. It was great fun. N never had more fun with anybody than with you. I send you my love and my best. And as I say again, I do miss you. <laughs> Who can I turn to? <laughs> you. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Well, Tony, the lights of Las Vegas were light years away from gaslit Oswald Street in Hackney, where you were born on September the 24th, 1931. As a child, you never knew your father, but as we see, you had a loving mum. She is now 90 years old, and she is here, your mother, Grace. Tony, is she still looking after her little boy? A chicken stew comes out and backs you straight in there. Oh yes, she's still looking after the small lad. Thank you, darling. Thank you very much. Well. 
As you well know, Grace had a struggle of bringing you up on her own in the East End of the 30s, working as a barmaid and any other job that came along. This is fun, isn't it? <laughs> it gets better, though. Uh, when, you were, when you were seven years old, you became a wartime evacuee. You were sent to Sawbridgeworth in Hertfordshire to stay with the late George and Vella Pescud. Well, back in London and working as a 14-year-old office boy, you see an advertisement for the Italo Conti Stage School. Mm -hmm. You apply, but you can't afford the fee of 30 shillings, £1.50, a week. Mm -hmm. But they are so impressed, they offer you the job of office boy at precisely 30 bob a week. Sure. You make your stage debut at Colchester Rep in April 1946. You were just 15. Two years later, you're a star. Steinman? Yes. Got any lodges? No. Money? No. Uh, Hungry? Yes. Well, I need. Well, 44 years on, young Oliver is an award-winning television producer, John Howard Davis. John, you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> no, you, I haven't. <laughs> what is your memory of Oliver? Well, when I was cast in the film by David Lean, um, I was about six weeks into the picture before I realised I wasn't going to get a gun and a horse. <laughs> but having said that, I met Tony and I was immediately envious. He had a top hat, mm. you had almond nuts up your nose. Yeah, I had an almond up one nose to give us the face a sort of a strange look. He was allowed to wear yeah. makeup and mm. I wasn't. And well, you didn't need it. You were so staggeringly good looking. Ah, but you were the star. <laughs> no, I wasn't the star. What's his name? No, the star. no, no you were the star. star. You were Alan. wonderful. Thank you. And I soon, because of his performance, disappeared into obscurity behind the camera. <laughs> For which we are grateful, because you've done wonderful work. <laughs> <laughs> you meant that well. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Fancy being jealous of something up somebody else's nose, isn't that strange? <laughs> Thank you, John. Now, that same year, you made a film with a young actress who was already an established child star. Perhaps I ought to explain. No one's looking now. Kiss me quickly. I shouldn't dream of doing anything as rash or indeed as sordid. What's the matter, sweetheart? Why are you talking to me like that? Look, I'm sure you're a well-mannered little girl, but I cannot help feeling that your abalance is a little misplaced. And she talks to you now, Petula Clark. <laughs> well, those were the days, weren't they? That was our first film together, vice versa. And then we did, I think we did a Hug It movie together. And then uh, we were supposed to do a film together called Dance Hall, in which uh, you were going to be my dance partner, and we were supposed to have a love scene together. Now, I, I was very excited about this, because I had quite a crush on you at the time. But you had to go into the army, so we didn't do it. <laughs> I just wish I could be with you tonight. I know it's going to be very special for you, a bit emotional, but <laughs> great anyway. Lots of love to you. Thank you, Petula Clark. <laughs> now, in The Lady is a Square, you appear with another up-and-coming young performer. You became lifelong pals, and the only reason he can't be here is because, as we all know, he's recovering from major surgery. Frankie Vaughan. Hello, Tony. I'm awfully sorry I can't be with you, but it's a marvellous opportunity to say how pleased I am for you. You deserve this great tribute. Let's face it, we go back many years. In fact, to one of my very first films. And of course, from then on, we became lifelong friends. And you went on and created some great songs. And now all I can say to you is, have a great night. Enjoy every moment. Love to you all. Bye, mate. Well, our thanks to Frankie Vaughan, and of course, we all send our best wishes. Yeah, yeah. 
Now, Tony, the film that launches your singing career comes in 1959. It was inspired by Elvis Presley reporting for army service, mm. and it was meant to be a bit of a leg pull. Yeah. Instead, when the Idol on Parade was released, you went straight to the top of the charts. Mm. And you've just recorded that number, this time as a duet. Yes, with my daughter Tara. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. why not hear it now? Mm. I think you're really sweet. Why? Because I love you. Because I love you. You say I'm your special treat Why? Because you love me We found a perfect love Yes, a love that's yours and mine I love you and you love me all the time Well, not only that, you recently became a double act with Tara's mother, Joan Collins, in a TV production of Noel Coward's Tonight at 8.30. Here you are, the Red Peppers, as a rival act, seeks revenge. Are you insinuating that I drink during the show? I am not insinuating at all. I am stating a fact. We can smell it a mile off. What a lady. What an artist. No. I don't suppose. Don't you take that tone with my... Send for the manager, George. Send for the manager. You be careful, otherwise I'll break every bone in your... There you are. You're wanted, Mr. Belly. The sketch is nearly over. I'll see you two later. You lousy son of a lounge lizard. <laughs> Well, tonight he didn't come here on the bus. It is Reg Varney. Oh, it's a pleasure, no. Reg, it's quite possible that you met Tony a few years before that. A few? Blimey, many, many years ago is when we were kids and I went up for the part of the Artful Dodger. And, uh, well, it's kind of common knowledge now. I, uh, he got it. The only thing I can think of, you must have looked more artful than me. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Is that a fact we were both up for that? Part? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I you know, Alfie exactly. Bass had it. Did he until really? I, uh, until I came Did he really? Yeah. yeah. So everybody's uh, angry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> everybody's <laughs> pleased about this. Listen, you'll, you'll remember, I must tell you this, sir. I haven't smoked for over 20 years, and you see, and, and uh, in this, uh, the Red Pepper thing, I had to be a chain smoker. But uh, we had the props, and uh, I used to make out, he lit the faggot, but we never, we never, we no, I never spoke to her, didn't I? Until we came to the first dress rehearsal, when we had to do it for real. I came in, I took the faggot, thanks very much, he gave me a light, and I went, <laughs> <laughs> You haven't taken it up again, oh, I hope. Oh, bloody no thanks. I was going to say, yeah, kiss a light, Gov. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank Reg Varney. Thank you. Mr Reg Varney. Tony, 33 years ago, you appeared on television with a now legendary comedy acknowledged as being ahead of its time, The Strange World of Gurney Slade. Well, that was in 1959. The young actress with you there has fond memories of that series and she'd like a word, Una Stubbs. Hello, Anthony. I was so pleased when you saw me in a ballet on television and asked me to be in the world of Gurney Slade because as it was only in the 60s, it was well ahead of its time. And I was a dancer then and really proud to be working with Anthony Newley. Well, I hope you're having a wonderful time this evening. I'm sorry I can't be with you. Bye. Thanks, Una. Uh, you know, and I worked together on uh, Give Us a Clue, and so did someone else who always includes one of your songs when he's doing panto. Look at that face. Just look at it. Look at that fabulous <laughs> face of yours. That familiar face is one of your oldest friends, Lionel Blair. Oh. I'm so touched you're here. Thank you. 
Would I not be? No, exactly. <laughs> Are you mad? Lionel, hello, hello, Michael. Now, you were singing that number when Tony popped in to see you in yes, Toronto. Yes, Tony, I was doing pantomime in uh, Toronto, and, and I sing to Cinderella, look at that face. And Tony was out front, and I knew he was there, and I was a bit nervous. And he came back, he said, look, mate, I don't mind you singing one of my songs, but please get the lyrics right. Oh, did you not get the lyrics? I got the lyrics all wrong, and I'm told you do the same oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just punches me up. Yes. I, oh, <laughs> that's, 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 don't, don't listen, congratulations. Thank have you. a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you, Lionel <laughs> Well, as you changes the course of your life, sure. that was 35 years ago. Mm -hmm. 35 years. <laughs> it's Leslie and Evie Brickus. <laughs> Well, it sounded more like Kenneth Williams, but it says here that was from <laughs> Stop the World, and that's the show that brought you and Tony together. That's right. It was a line about a long-lasting marriage, which seemed a lot funnier <laughs> yeah. 35 years ago than it does now. <laughs> I met Tony about a year before Stop the World. Uh, as a recording artist, he did a couple of my songs, and uh, we had a lot of fun together and decided to try and write something. Bernard Delfont had asked him to do a summer show in Brighton. He could do anything he wanted. Yeah. And what he wanted to do was a one-man show with ten girls, yeah. naturally. Or, or, <laughs> and, uh, or just get a hotel and go to with <laughs> ten girls. Right? And would I write it with him and could I start tomorrow? And unfortunately, the very next day, Evie and I were leaving for New York. I was writing a show for Beatrice Lilly. So, Evie, and, what happened next? Oh, well, I felt very strongly about the two of them writing together. So I said to Leslie, please call Tony and tell him to come with us to New York. Mm -hmm. Which you did yeah. the so very Les next day. Yes, uh, and, and Leslie wrote his show in the afternoon, and we wrote Stop the World in the morning. It took us four weeks, <laughs> <laughs> and that was just the beginning. And then we went on to Roar of the Grease Paint, and then Hollywood, and we did Doctor Doolittle, in which Tony starred with Rex Harrison, Willy Wonka, Peter Pan, Good Old Bad Old Days, and now this tremendous success as Scrooge, which is wonderful because it's brought him back to the musical theatre where he belongs. He's one of the few truly authentic musical theatre stars that exist. Welcome. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. And to save your modesty, I will mention here that you and Tony have just been elected to America's Songwriters Hall of Fame. So there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sasha, you, you remember the good old bad old days? Yes, I was uh, eight or nine, I think, when you did that show. And uh, I seem to remember the idea of the show was that God loses faith with mankind and decides he's going to destroy the world. Mm. And uh, the devil steps in and takes man's side yeah, and defends man. Case. And you play the devil, so mm. you were the good guy, I suppose. Yeah. And I used to go backstage and watch Dad get uh, into his costume, which was a, a brown jumpsuit, That's right. and which had a long foam latex tail with a red prong on the end, yeah. and a pair of shoes with uh, cloven hoof toe caps, and the inevitable pair of plastic horns which went in there. And we'd go in under the stage and wait for your entrance, which you remember was up through a, a trap door. door. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But uh, it was a very interesting way to, to, first, to come at show business. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, it must have been, because now you are in the business yourself, and you've yes. directed a movie just as your father did when he moved to Hollywood. Well, three internationally successful musicals which you star in as well as co-write mean constant touring. And in Las Vegas, you hit the jackpot on the cabaret circuit, sharing the bill with such stars as this man, comedy veteran Buddy Hackett. Oh. Anthony Newley, this is your life. Remember me? I was a big part of your life. I've worked with some of the biggest stars in the business. Great singers, great performers. But of all of them, Newley is the only one that I always kept the speaker open in the dressing room because Tony, to this day, I don't get tired of your songs and the way you sing and the stylish way you do things. You are a classy guy to be partners with. You are great fun to hang out with. May the best be yet to come. Thank you, Buddy Haggard.
And another Las Vegas headliner whose comedy routines many of us can still do word for word is Bob Newhart. Tony, it, it's a long overdue honor that you're receiving tonight. It's a, you're an incredible talent and you've led an incredible life. And I'm glad to be just a small part of it. Please say hi to Grace. We miss you over here on the other side of the pond. Thank you, Bob Newhart. But Tony, it's not quite the close of our show. You have two more children from your third marriage. Christopher, who is 12, is at school in Massachusetts, but he would like a word. Hi, Dad. Life here at Eagle Brook in Massachusetts is fun, even though I am skipping school to make this for you. See you around. Bye. See you around, huh? And your daughter, Shelby, is at the University of Oregon. But not tonight, Dad. I'm right here in Birmingham. We stopped the world to get her on a plane. <laughs> Shelby. Anthony Newley, this is your life. Oh, thank you. Very much.